Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video, we're going to be discussing an evidence-based approach to neck strengthening. Now, before we get into the specific muscles or specific movements, we need to take a look at this study here because this really sets the framework for everything that we're going to talk about. So here's the study. Cervical resistance training effects on isometric and dynamic strength. And also understand that to look for hypertrophy effects, they also quantified the person's neck circumference both before and after the training protocol. And the training protocol involved the following. So here's the parameters. They always began with a warm-up set at 20% of MVIC. MVIC is maximal volitional isometric contraction. So they measure how much force you're able to produce at 100% effort isometrically, and that's your MVIC. And then they did 20% of that for whatever movement they were dealing with. Now the movements that were performed in this study were flexion, extension, left side bending, and right side bending. They did not actually do rotation in the study, which is technically a limitation here. When they did working sets following the warm-up for flexion and side bending, they were performed at 45% of MVIC. When they did extension resistance training, it was done at 75% of MVIC. And for each repetition, the requirement was that it moved through at least 75% of their maximal active range of motion each repetition. So they would have had to first measure their maximal active range of motion for the given movements, and they had to move through at least 75% of that for it to count as a repetition. So if they moved through only 60% of it, it would not count as a repetition. They also had a rhythm that went with this. They wanted approximately two seconds for each concentric movement and two seconds for each eccentric component of the movement and avoiding resting between repetitions. And overall, for each movement, they did three sets of 10, meaning a 10 RM. So the 10th repetition was basically extremely difficult, okay? They may not have been able to do an 11th or 12th repetition, okay? And then between sets, there was a 90 second rest period. And they did this protocol for each movement three times a week for 12 weeks. Now, in terms of rotation, obviously that was not done in this study. But I would say from my own personal and clinical experience, we'd probably want to group rotation more with flexion and side bending. It's more of a similar type of movement. Um, extension is a lot stronger of a movement, much stronger than flexion, side bending, and rotation. So I would say based on that, not basing it off of anything in the literature, but we'd probably want to do rotation also at approximately 45% of MVIC. Now I don't want to linger too long on this slide, I just want to quickly summarize the big bullet point effects of this neck training protocol. So number one, they did see an increase, a statistically significant increase in isometric neck strength for all of the movements that were trained. Flexion, extension, and then both side bends. Okay. Number two, they saw an improvement in dynamic strength. And again, statistically significant increase in dynamic strength. And again, the difference being, if I was doing isometric, let's say flexion, it would just be this. They saw an improvement in that. They also saw an improvement in dynamic strength, so being able to move against resistance dynamically. Both of those increases for all the movements were statistically significant. Now, I mentioned at the beginning, they also looked at neck circumference to look for hypertrophy. That change was not statistically significant, okay? But what you can see here is that the neck circumference on average changed from 38.8 centimeters at baseline to 40.2 centimeters after 12 weeks of the resistance training. Now, when you take that difference and convert it to inches for all our American people here, it basically amounts to about half an inch. Now, I will tell you from experience, growing neck circumference is quite difficult. Um, and even though this wasn't statistically significant, I would actually still comment that you actually do see a decent increase in neck circumference, okay? Even though it wasn't statistically significant, I know we have to go with that. But they even comment in this uh, paper later on in the conclusion that it was a moderate increase in neck circumference. So while it was not statistically significant, it begs the question if they had trained these movements harder, maybe done lower repetitions, higher resistance, or done it for a longer period of time, would you see a statistically significant improvement or increase in that neck circumference? Just some food for thought as we go forward into the exercises. Please make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification button for notifications for all videos in the future. Thank you so much.